Charles' law is a great law because it has a wonderful application that we're going to talk about in a second. What its law, this law is, in a nutshell, is that the volume and temperature of a gas actually vary directly with one another when you keep the pressure constant. So, at constant pressure, the volume of a gas varies directly with its temperature. They're directly proportional as opposed to indirectly proportional or inversely proportional as the pressure and volume were in Boyle's Law. Now look at this. So V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So we can solve for one unknown here when we know three of the others. How do you graph something like this? Well, as one goes up, the other goes up. So you could graph it like that, right? As one goes up, the other goes up. But notice that I didn't start it here at the zero. Because you know what? In terms of temperature, and let's go to de degrees Celsius for this, okay? You can actually have zero degrees Celsius, and you can have negative temperatures. I live in Alberta. We get negative temperatures for 11 months of the year. <laughs> so, if you can have a negative temperature, that means you can actually go into this side of the graph over here, where this was zero for degrees Celsius, you could actually go into the negatives. This is not great in terms of our calculations for this formula, because if we can have zero degrees Celsius, and we can, do we still have a volume of gas? Well, yes, at zero degrees Celsius, we can still breathe in Alberta and everywhere else in the world, so that means that there's still gas out there that occupies a volume. Okay. But if you put a zero in for any temperature, poof, what you get is automatically an undefined number. It doesn't work. You can't do the math. So you're happy, right? You can't do the math. No, no, no. We have to do the math. So what are we going to do? We actually have to come up with a new temperature scale. One that incorporates all of the possible temperatures in a positive fashion. Well, interestingly, in Charles' law, what he found out was you could have, this could be gas here, gas X, and you could have a bunch of different gases that actually have different properties, so they actually will have different uh, volumes at different temperatures. But you know what? All of these gases will converge at one point where, theoretically, they can have virtually a zero volume, all at that one point. That temperature, which hasn't really been reached yet on this planet, is called absolute zero. An absolute zero is actually zero K for Kelvins, not no degree sign there, just K for Kelvins. Or, that's also negative 273.15, or just negative 273 degrees Celsius. So, negative 273 degrees Celsius is 0 K. But fortunately, Celsius and Kelvins go up in the same increments. So, if you ever have to find Kelvins, you take your degrees Celsius and just add 273 to get your K. Charles Law question. All right, at constant pressure, because the pressure has to be held constant, 300 milliliters of a gas at 25 degrees Celsius is warmed to 35 degrees Celsius. So what's going to happen? As you warm up that gas in that, in that container, there's going to be more molecular motion that takes place. They're going to be bouncing around more. But if the pressure is to stay the same and not increase in that container, the container has to actually expand. So the volume is actually going to have to go up if the temperature goes up. If one goes up, the other goes up in order to equal a constant K. All right, but before you can plug numbers into that formula over there for Charles' Law, you better make sure that you understand that the temperatures must be converted from 25 and 35 degrees Celsius to 298K and 308K by adding 273. If you don't convert to Kelvin, that's it. You get it wrong. No kidding. That's what will happen. So. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. We've got to rearrange the formula and solve for V2. That means you have to multiply each side by T2. And if you do that, T2 cancels here. 
and you're left with V2 equals V1 times T2 over T1. Plug in your numbers, 300 and 308 divided by 298K, and you're going to get 310 mils. The temperature went up 10 degrees Celsius. The volume actually expanded by 10 milliliters. That's kind of cool.